Alrighty, welcome back. We are going to jump on to the next section. We are going to draw our players' positions onto each uh, to each client's map and onto the server's map. So think about this more along the level of you have two Unity games, or you have two clients out there uh, in the business world. And you simply need some way of validating the transmission on the server. Um, whatever the server is showing, it should be what all the clients are seeing. Unless for some reason you don't want them to see. So think about two, having like two Unity games and the server, the clients, the actual server is just this project right here. <laughs> it's very plain, Jane. All you want to show on the local server, you don't have to show the full 3D project. You don't have to show the full game on the server. All you want to see is some dots showing the players. Let's get going. I'll be talking way too much about it. All right, first we're going to jump to the server form. And I am going to jump down to the bottom below listen. I'm only going to create a new method. Hold on. One quick second. Yeah, this can be private now. And simply draw players. I'm going to pass it in a list of users. So you could have a custom list. Span is no longer used. Uh, it probably will be used in a future tutorial. But it was just going to make this tutorial too long. So this isn't really true back buffering or double buffering, but it is good enough. We, depending on which bitmap was used last, we are going to paint to the other one. Picture box is using the actual bitmap, and the bitmap is a class or a reference type. So if we start drawing to it, it's very possible that they can see it. They'll see it on the screen before we get finished, especially on a slightly slower machine. They'll see some flashing going on at least. So. Solid brush for each a brooch, bro. Solid brush for each player, and we're simply gonna fill in lips. Almost typed it again. We'll make our size, I don't know, 10 by 10. Dispose of it. And set the picture boxes image equal to the BMP. Okay. Jump over to the server. I don't think we added the picture box to the server. Yeah, we didn't. Is added it to the client. So open up the toolbox, find the picture box, make sure the tab page, not the header, is selected. Didn't say that before. Rename it something easy to type. Fill. Let's go back to the form. So, one place we are going to call this is from the message timer. So yeah, we're going, graphics was actually really, always really good in Windows Forms. Um, they didn't take it <laughs> to a really hardcore level, but it, you could make a silly game with it. All right, 
in yeah like I said spans out of here for right now all right jump over to the form client well first of all we can simply copy this because they're almost identical they're not identical but they're almost identical paste this down at the bottom of here of the form uh, client we just have uh, well actually they are identical now but okay now we're already updating the position so on the login when the button login is clicked we're immediately going to i don't want that i just want to draw players and users in the pp that's it m users i have Oh, MGC client dot users. There we go. And where else do I draw it? Kind of horrible. And on the message timer tipped. Of course. Okay. Let's take a quick look at it here. I know it's not the most complex thing in the world, but that can be very good. Test zero, log in. And there we are, we're a little bit dot. And there we are again. But are we? Yeah, our server is not clearing. So, all of our dots are red though. Ah, I did that, hold on. Those are all of our other players. So our server is actually drawing all of the players out there. Come on, don't crash on me, Microsoft. If our users in dot client is not equal to null, and our users in dot client is connected. Okay, makes a big difference. So our actual cl G client isn't so much worried about this because if it has a user it should be connected but our server should be a little bit more worried about it next of all all my fake users up here i made them all red red green blue uh yellow i don't know pink and orange there we go. All right. You know, whatever colors you want to use, just give them all a different color. All right. So listen, login test zero, open up another client, login test one. And there we go. There's right there all together and there we go and now if we open up over here we can kind of see what's going on not that fabulous i, rem I admit because we're just jumping to the other place right now but hopefully i'll be able to get back to this and implement some win 2d and we can have little characters Maybe get them from um, open game art. But right now, the server, of course, we do nothing when we click around on it. And this does work across the internet, just like the previous sample did. Alrighty. That is it. We are finished. You now should be able to write across, write a little bit more efficiently back and forth across the TCP.
client and the TCP listener. Remember, uh, the bigger you make your class, the bigger you have to consider to ha how big your buffer needs to be, the bigger you, you need to make this buffer. Right now it's 4K. I mean, it's four, you know, it's, it's, it's minute in size. Uh, really, you can take that much larger. It could easily be a couple megabytes. It's uh, almost nothing now. So <laughs> you can really enlarge that to have, but you're going to be passing that information back and forth. Um, when we serialize, though, this is just for receiving now. We don't, we don't send with this anymore, though. So when we serialize, we're only sending exactly what we're using. So when we, this is serialization, although we're not using the binary serializer, this is the same thing. So we're using the least amount of RAM, the least amount of network uh, band space, uh, bandwidth to actually send the information back and forth. That's possible. That being said, the read needs to be able to hold it, so you will have to increase the size, especially for a chat engine, if that's what you're planning on. And this could be implemented in Unity, Monogame, uh, Godot, whatever, Godot. Um, I originally thought Godot, or Godot was uh, Godot. And a lot of people won't call it got it. I guess, I guess because it's just the name. It's using God's name in vain. Maybe. I don't know. But. It's actually based on a book. I think from Brazil. Waiting on Got It. Which is the name of a person. Um, but it doesn't really matter which one of these. You're, which one you're working with, you should be able to pass that information back and forth. So, if you got something out of this, like and subscribe. God bless. I'll see you in the next playlist, next tutorial. And hopefully the next tutorial on this subject will be with Win2D. And I'll, I will implement some fake 3D. See you then.